Moving on to camera movement. Camera movement is, it adds kinetic energy to your shots, okay? Many of the movies that we work on, or many of the movies that we we're, you know we see and we watch and we work on, there is a lot of movement in them, okay? If you go back and watch older films, you'll see a lot less dolly shots, a lot less just camera movement in general. But nowadays, we find those movies to be a little bit slower, okay? It's not that we can't use it or don't do it, but we do use a lot of movement, so it behooves you to learn how to move the camera well. And gimbals can help you, but it's also good to know how to use traditional equipment like you can see in these images. The bottom image is of a slider, which is um, will work on a smaller style camera, although that's a pretty big red that he's got. But traditionally in Hollywood, they're still using dollies like the one in the top picture. That's the traditional dolly that gets used on most motion pictures. Um, again, movement adds energy to the shot. Um, and just some basic kind of things to know is left to right movement has speed. It's easier to follow and it seems more smooth to the audience. And right to left movement seems slower and against the grain. Okay. Now, I usually ask this question in class, like, why do you think that is? And inevitably, somebody in the class raises their hand and says, it's because we read that way, which is a smart answer to give, but it's not correct. Okay, they've done these visual experiments all over the world in places where they read up and down, where they read um, right to left, where they can't read at all. They're illiterate. And when you play, they will play them a shot going left to right and then just play the exact same shot. Just flip it and go the other direction. And the shots are both moving the exact same speed. And people say the left to right feels smoother, seems faster and, and easier to follow. Okay, so it's just the way our brains are wired. So how do we use something like that when we're making movies? Okay, well, if you're trying to generate speed, you're doing a chase scene or something like that, and you want to generate some speed, you want to try to create the movement in your frame going left to right. Now, I might be going right to left if I'm flipped, but for me, that's left to right, okay? If you're trying to make it feel like somebody's not getting anywhere or they're having trouble reaching their goal or maybe somebody's being chased and, and you want to feel like the the guy or the bad guy is catching up to them, then try to make maybe your movement go right to left and it'll feel like a little bit against the grain, okay? So those are just some little tricks and tips to kind of use like the way the brain is wired to kind of add impact to your shots, okay? So basic types of movements, you have a pan. So a pan is when the camera is on a tripod and you're just moving the camera like that. Um, a pan is on a nautil point, okay? If I was to go like this, that's not a pan, okay? Because my camera is also moving um, horizontally as well. A pan is when it's locked into a spot, which is on a tripod. And then the tilt is the same thing, not a point, and we're going up and down. So again, if I'm going like this, that's not a tilt. That's a booming move, okay? So a crane move or a boom is when we're seeing elevation change with the actual camera as well. And then you have aerial, which is up in, you know, drone type stuff, helicopter stuff. And then you have handheld, which is what most students actually want to do. But we got to learn how to use a tripod here in this class. Okay, so I'm sure you all know what handheld is. It's mostly how you shoot the stuff that you shoot with your phones. Okay. These are, this is just a quick look at kind of options that can be used in the way the camera gets moved. So traditional handheld, there's a picture of me from a long time ago looking much thinner. Um, and I'm just hand holding that camera, right? So that's a pretty traditional hand holding cam. That camera is pretty heavy. And usually the heavier the camera, the easier it is to keep steady handhold. When you're using your phone, the phone's so light that if you just had a little bit of too much coffee, we're going to get this like shaky shot. So using a heavy camera is actually easier to keep a steady shot. But nowadays they have all these like gimbals and rigs like you see in the middle frame on the top up there. That guy is using something called an easy rig, which is this vest he has on and it has a wire that comes down the front and that wire is actually holding the weight of the camera so that way the camera operator doesn't have to hold the camera up they just have to operate it and then it's also on some kind of a ronin like uh, uh, stabilizing system as well so that's to make everything a little bit smoother and then the last picture over on the top is a guy using a steady cam steady cams are way more complex and way more difficult to use than your um, gimbals and your uh, easy rigs it takes very it takes a lot of training um, but they're fantastic tools to get nice smooth shots you can get a steady cam with a good operator and they could be running along the beach and it'll look like a perfectly smooth shot 
Okay, so um, that's a very skilled thing to learn how to do to operate Steadicam. And then you have a picture of a drone. Um, and then another thing that's a fantastic way to do dolly shots, especially in student films, is to get yourself a, a wheelchair. Wheelchairs are fantastic dollies when you're trying to do something um, work beautifully. And then the last shot is um, a crane. So that's a little bit bigger crane that drives. And then the two operators can sit. The, the, the one guy sitting down up there is the focus puller. So he's trying to keep everything in focus. And then the one kind of kneeling on the seat, that's me. And I was camera operating that shot. Um, and um, so, the, the, you know, th that thing's meant so that the camera operator can actually operate the camera up at the top. But they do make cranes like that where it's just the camera that goes on it. And then you actually use a remote head on the top to... Um, from the ground to control it all right so those are different types of movements that you can do so now we're going to actually look at some movement here the first one being the i think it's the i don't remember what order it goes and i think the the pan and the whip pan goes first now a traditional pan is just like this nice smooth kind of movement like this a whip pan is a very much uh a very quick move and the trick to it is it can't be like you whip over and then like you realize you misframed it and then you have to reframe it it can't be like boom okay there you got it it's got to be boom and i'm locked in okay so let's look at that one first oh you know what sorry the first one that came up was the dolly push in okay so let's look at the dolly push in and then we'll go over to the whip pan even though i know they're both moving so that dolly push in is a nice slow push in on harrison ford playing indiana jones and we're pushing in on him looking at the object okay it's it's nice it's smooth it's under control it's a really fantastic shot now we go over to the whip pan and it's um you'll see it switches over and it just lands on the spot so we're going to go pretty quick it's not slow and it lands and it hits that's the whip pan so that's one of the options you have for one of your shots now if i click the next one i think it's the tilt that goes next tilt up Okay, so that's a pretty quick tilt, but that's basically what a tilt shot looks like. Okay, there it is one more time. And then we're going to go over to the boom, which is that elevation change of the camera. So you're going to see as she rises up, the camera is going to pass the, um, the, the kind of support bar on the Jeep. And that gives us the movement, right? It helps us see the movement. So there's that boom move. Okay, so that's boom action. Okay. So those are different types of camera moves. Now we are looking at some other ones. Again, I'm trying to remember which ones go first. Um, I can't remember. I should have looked at that. So we got a dolly push in zoom, which is the dolly zoom or zolly is what they call it sometimes. That's the one from Star, um, Star Trek. No, that's from Jaws. It's from Jaws and it's the guy sitting with the girl behind him kind of massaging his neck. That's a very cool shot that we're going to look at. So let's see if that's what goes up first. That's called the dolly zoom or the zolly. And you can see as you watch it, the camera is getting closer, but the background is getting bigger. So that is pushing in on him with the dolly but zooming out on the lens so that's a tricky one to get but it's got a very cool effect and it's very dramatic i think the next one we're going to look at is this dolly tracking shot from one of the fast and the furious films and you're going to see how um it's a nice smooth track so a push in is on a dolly but tracking is when we're paralleling somebody oh now we're doing handheld sorry I guess the handheld goes first so i just want you to watch this handheld shot for a few try times too this, this, this handheld is like excellent and, and, and very skilled handheld. It isn't like shaky and like we can't tell what's going on. This is a handheld shot that keeps a beautiful frame. The person kind of flows inside the frame. The camera doesn't get scared that they got too close to the edge and try to whip pan over to catch them. It's just letting the person play inside the frame. And it's a very short frame. It's a very short shot, but you can see the the operator knows what they're doing and they're not intimidated by the fact that the person gets so close to the edge he knows that they're going to come back in and he's going to be able to catch them or she's going to be able to catch them back in there it's just a very uh elegant shot even though it's handheld so i think we go to the dolly tracking next yep there we are we catch up to the girl and then we pass her up so again we're going to do it here the girl's going to start the move and it guides our tracking and then we pass her up and she's gonna start the race. And the last one on the bottom is called the arc shot. We're not gonna watch the whole arc shot, but it's just the idea that the camera kind of goes around the subject. 
So this one's got a little bit of sound. I'm not sure if you can hear the sound. He's a model. He's a model. He's a model. I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to reduce. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But notice how we're kind of rotating around the two subjects. That's an arc shot. We're going to cut out of it for a second and cut back to it. But um, that's an arc shot, right? So we can cut away for it for a second. And now we're back to the arc. Okay. So that is everything. We got through all the different shots. Um, for the most part, if you wanted to look examples up on YouTube as well, you could do it. But I do want you to really pay close attention about um, like where you're framing them. Bottom of the waist to the top of the head for medium shots, right? I get a lot of shots where they go to the waist, but then there's all this space above their head. Well, that's not a medium shot. That's just a poorly framed cowboy or something, right? So um, if you have any questions, you can definitely send me an email, get to it early. Um, that way you know, like I have time to get back to you kind of thing. Right. And then we won't, uh, we won't be in class this, uh, we won't be doing that this week. You'll be watching this stuff on, on, on zoom or on canvas. Um, but then we'll pick up again the next week. All right. So have a good week. Um, take care. Got questions. Let me know.